Good afternoon, everybody. As we gather up here for midday prayer, I'm looking forward to uh, being with you today. I um, want to make sure we're live, and it looks like we are. Uh, I'll give you a chance to sign on with us, and um, we will get started in just a minute. Let me know you're here. If you'd like to add anybody to our prayer list, uh, please put their names in the comments or chat, and I will be glad to include them as we gather together. Uh, good to see you with us, uh, Lynn. Peace, love, joy, and hope and blessings to you as well. I see Dawn's with us as well. And um, they say where two or three are gathered in his name, Jesus promises to be among us. So we also know that Jesus is among us today. So we're going to get started um, as we um, gather together. And um, uh, I will add Liz. We'll do that right now to our prayer list, uh, Lynn. Um, so we'll get started as we center ourselves uh, for this time of prayer. As we breathe in the breath of God and we breathe out our cares and our concerns. And we breathe in the love of God and we breathe out our doubts and our despairs. And we breathe in the life of God and we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. Well, what a beautiful day it is out today, uh, rel relatively warm, but still a beautiful sunshiny day today. Um, the lesson I picked for us to, to contemplate on is really a song. Um, it's a song that Zachariah sings after the birth of his son, John the Baptist. Um, and just a little backdrop, Zachariah has, um, has been quiet for a while. Um, he kind of argued with God and, um, or at least with the gay, angel Gabriel, uh, whether or not Elizabeth could uh, bear a child. And so he was um, made mute. Uh, and it wasn't until um, he spoke and said that they were to name John, John, that his lips were open. And then he sings this beautiful song. Um, and I want us to kind of hear the words of the song. Um, uh, sometimes it's uh, actually sung liturgically in, in parts of worship service. It comes from Luke, the first chapter starting at the 68th verse. So Luke 1, 68. Hear these words. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And so Zachariah's song, uh, I think it's a beautiful song. It, um, and I was re as I was reflecting on it, I, taught, I used this as our devotion at our finance meeting this past uh, last night. Um, and as I um, reflected on it then and continue to reflect on it um, throughout this week, I, I am astounded at Zechariah's uh, proclamation, really, um, of, of the reality of God's mercy, right? I mean, we know that God loves us, and, um, and we, we talk all the time. I've got posters in, the, in, in behind me here that tell us, remind us that, uh, that God is good, right, and that God loves us. But I want us to kind of sit in that space of knowing that God is merciful, right? Because I, in so many ways, I think it's it's God's propensity to show mercy, and mercy is that 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 action that God takes not to give us basically what we probably deserve or what our actions would warrant that we receive, but instead to give us grace and love, right? 
but that God's propensity to show mercy really does serve as the foundation of the relationship that God has with God's people. Uh, and it goes back all the way to Abraham. If you notice that there, there are none of the folks in the Bible that, that God calls to do God's work are without fault. I mean, Abraham's not, David's not, you know, um, Solomon's not, uh, the disciples weren't. No one called to, uh, to really do God's work are without fault. And yet God's mercy kind of undergirds God's choosing to be in relationship with them. And I think under God, undergirds God's uh, choosing to be re in relationship with us. And so with mercy kind of as that foundation, then God is free then to love us um, and to show us grace. And, and, and our sitting in, in the reality of that mercy we have received, I think is what helps us see the light that God is shining into the darkness of our world, into the darkness of our lives, into those corners where maybe we have a hard time even seeing hope. So let's let's hold on to God's mercy. Our friends from um, Camp Hill are going to help us do that as well. Uh, so let's hold on to God's mercy as we travel through this day and in the days to come, knowing that it is the that is that mercy that we get from God that is the foundation upon which God builds our relationships together. So let's let's hear our friends from Camp Hill, and then we'll get back together and pray again. If you have folks to add to the prayer list, just put them in the comments or the chat. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, as sins they are many, His mercy is more. What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, He counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, His mercy. of kindness he lavished on us 
His blood was the payment, His life was the cost. We stood neath the debt we could never Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. I like to remember that every day. And now let us gather together and pray. Praise the Lord. Three words that speak so much, dear God, of our love for you, our thankfulness for you, and our overwhelming joy at knowing that even as our sins are many, your mercy is more and your love is the balm that that soothes us all. So let that love shower upon all of those who are in need. We pray for those who continue to struggle with the war in Ukraine, for those who continue to struggle with COVID, for um, uh, schools as they are letting out for the summer, that summer breaks would be refreshing for families. We pray for congregations that continue to regather for worship and praise and to do your work in the world. And we pray to God for your healing presence to be with all of those who suffer, <clears throat> suffer in any way, particularly with Gladys Collins, Betty Roop, Eleanor Grebe, Jennifer Fox Moody, Laura Dareth, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fails, Rebecca Neal, Jeff, Glenn Hardesty, Connie and Herb Koss, McKenna Day, Barbara Dareth, Jane Cox, Lauren Mueller, Woody and Charlotte Wallach, Sabrina, Sean Fitzsimmons, Mia Zinn and family, Trent, Donna, Dave and Nancy, Lynn Smith, Jared and Samantha, Linda Heitzelman, Peggy Helwig, Shirley Hillman, Allie Watts, Ron, Judy Kelly, Ebony, Ruby Gottstall, Aaliyah, Liz, and all of those that we name aloud are silently in our hearts at this time. Bring health and wholeness to all your people. Your love and your mercy also undergird our faith in a life with you that never comes to an end, and is a life that even death itself cannot bring to a close. Yet even as we sit in the shadow, in the valley of the shadow of death, uh, we know that your presence is with us, and we ask that that presence be extended to all of those who grieve the death of their loved ones, uh, to the families of the Emmanuel Nine, whom we commemorate this week, um, particularly on Friday the 17th, we also ask God that your your presence be with those um, family and friends of Carol Stickle, who died just this week. Um, 
services for her will be next Tuesday here at the church. And for all of those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, may you comfort their hearts with the promise of life that never comes to an end with you. And now, God, we join together and we pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as God's people join together in community, we breathe in the breath of God. And we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our haste and our apprehensions. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our work and our worry. And now, uh, I'll see you on uh, Friday for Midday Prayer. Uh, may, might see you tonight if you're joining us for um, our midweek worship service at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Until then, have a great day and receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thanks for joining in. I look forward to seeing you Friday and maybe tonight and Sunday and all the times that we can get together to worship our, our merciful God. Amen. <laughs>